but I'd like to just point out a few very important issues that have been raised that are essential for our future work, I think, not only in the academy, but in collaboration with partners all over the world. Uh, Peter made a very important observation that the evolution of society is nothing new. Uh, uh, and that's true. It has been uh, evolving over millennia. Uh, but then what is new today, I think is important for us to understand. One of the things that's new is never before has the evolutionary, the evolution of society stood to determine the whole future of humanity. Where we're no, whatever we do individually for our own benefit or uh, uh, pain or suffering, uh, never before have, have the, the, the risks and the potential rewards been of this magnitude. Secondly, never has the, the pressure and necessity of speed of response been anything like this. In, in, I mean, the industrial revolution spread over two centuries. We, th we see changes uh, like COVID spreading over uh, around the world in, in a few months. Uh, so never before have we come to realize as a collective humanity, the need that the only solutions lie if we do this together. And that is unprecedented. We recognized after World War II, at least the European the warring nations recognized we can't afford another world war but a lot of the world was left out of that process uh, anyway. But today we realize that unless everybody participates, unless everybody's engaged, unless we're all aligned, we'll be working at cross purposes and undermining our capacity, collective capacity uh, to achieve. So there is something unprecedented. And that comes, I think, to something very important. How do we make the process of social evolution, which has been long, slow, and independently operating, leading to catalysts and imitation and competition and so on. How do we make this a collective movement of humanity? And that raises the issues that Frank raised of what would be the values that, that run it, because he's absolutely right. It is the values that are going to determine the type of change. How do we build consensus for those values? And then one of our speakers, at least one mentioned the problem of power. Those, we may have the values that we want, but do we have the power? Uh, because change is affected by power. And how do we instill those values into the centers of power or reframe the centers of power in such a way to really imbibe the values that we put on paper long time ago, like, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which we now uh, push forward as the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, but still without the organizational power to enforce them. So another uniqueness of this is, for the first time in humanity, we, we evolved nation states over centuries. Now we are compelled under pressure to evolve instruments for global governance uh, at a rate, pace, and to do something unprecedented in history, no longer in bits and pieces, it fits and starts. And we don't have the institutions to do that. And on top of all that, we have to have the humility to know we don't really fully have the knowledge <laughs> of how to, how to consciously evolve ourselves. We may know what should be done, we may be very clear to us what everybody else should do, but how to get it done? And I think the humility to recognize this is to place us really at the forefront of where human evolution is today. We are trying to awaken and become conscious of the long process of our own evolution and how do we transform it into a conscious process with the aid of all the challenges and pressures uh, whether it's COVID or climate change or nuclear proliferation or uh, whatever it is. And therefore, our, the, the pressure for our institutions 
to radically reframe themselves. It's not just education, of course. It's all the, the ed- economy, it's a technology, it's governance, it's all the institutions. But I think we all agree that education plays a unique role in this. We can say has a unique responsibility, but that sounds like passing the buck. Those who understand that without the knowledge, it's not going to happen in the way we need it. And that means we have a greater responsibility to look beyond our present knowledge, our present institutional survival. There's an enormous pressure on institutions today in it, to survive in, in changing times and to adapt and to really align themselves to the, to the needs of the world. I think this is a message that's coming out from all that's being said at the conference, uh, that education is not a sector anymore. Education, we're, align, we're trying to align ourselves with the central aspirations and central needs of humanity. And there's nothing wrong with saying we don't have all the answers because our government, our democracy doesn't have all the answers. Uh, our civil society doesn't have all the answers. And there was one final point. Uh, I think it has been ma- mentioned perhaps by Frank or uh, by Zbig, uh, the, the necessity of bottom up. Whether we're talking bottom up or top down, I'm not convinced it's one or the other. I think we need it coming from all directions and, and all sectors. Uh, because, but there is a there, but the point is the kind of dramatic revolutions that we've seen in the past have tended to be something in, implemented from above. But if you look at them, always because there was a sanction and preparation from below where there was a readiness or an awakening or an aspiration from below, but never before have we been able to engage and mobilize global civil society or global humanity to come together, to mobilize our energy, to mobilize our aspirations, to mobilize the correct collective power of humanity, to work together. So this is, this is an evolutionary challenge worth working for.